iPhone cameras are lit. Just got a text. It is crazy how good these things are getting. As a creator, I used to hate mobile photography. My setup has been for a while now, a Sony ZV-E1, which is shooting this video, and an A7R 3 which I use for photography due to that high megapixel count. I've always been on a bit of a high horse scenario around mobile photography. I, I've got it, but I've not really done much of it. But I just got the new iPhone 15 Pro Max and the camera on this thing is phenomenal. I maxed it out as well. I got one terabyte. I was just on there like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so in this video, I will be running through the best iPhone camera settings for mobile photography so you can take some phenomenal pictures with your iPhone. I'll also be running through which lenses you should be using on there, as well as a few cheeky tips and tricks when you're out shooting pictures. Before we dive into this, if you want to speed up your photo editing process, you can get my Lightroom presets. They sync across Lightroom Classic and across Lightroom Mobile. They are in the description below. Alas, to the camera settings. On One's iPhone, come to the settings and search for camera if you can't find it in there. Uh, then into the camera settings, the first section we are going to tinker with is the formats section. Uh, because in here, you'll see two settings at the top here, uh, and we want to change from high efficiency to most compatible. High efficiency will compensate quality, so that's basically why we want to change it, and it's likely that your iPhone's default setting will be in high efficiency. Prioritizing storage over quality, and if we're shooting, we don't want that. <laughs> Next, we want to make sure to turn on Pro Raw and resolution control, uh, and you wanna make sure that the Pro Raw's default setting is set to maximum. Using up all those 48 glorious megapixels that this titanium bad boy has <laughs> it. Oh, you beautiful little thing. Slick and sexy, baby. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. This makes sure that you're shooting in the highest resolution possible. In this case, it's 48 megapixels. You wanna make sure that you're shooting in RAW because RAW is an uncompressed file, which means that you are keeping all of the data, whereas a JPEG is a compressed file and you are compressing the data. When shooting in RAW, it means we've got more dynamic range to play with in the editing and we can push the colors further. We can basically do what we want with it. And at 48 megapixels, it's a pretty high resolution, which means when you take a photo, you can crop in and still maintain a good amount of resolution. Those are the formats done. Anyway, now into preserve settings. This is purely to save time and make it quick fire photography, basically. Quick fire, like a Western, like a show air. <laughs> what are you gonna do, make me a fucking cake? <laughs> <laughs> Just run through all of these and turn them on, basically. Camera mode, creative control, depth control, macro controls, exposure adjustments, night mode, action mode, Pro Raw and resolution on, and Apple Pro Res on, which is completely to do with video settings, which I will do a separate video on iPhone video settings for the best video possible. Subscribe if you're not already for that one coming. Right, that was a quick pit stop in there. Now onto the next section, which is composition. Get your grid on. It's a great way to learn, especially as a beginner. It just helps you compose a photo properly. It's very useful. Just turn it on. And get your levels on also. We don't want wonky pictures, not a vibe. Literally nothing screams amateur hour more than a wonky horizon in a picture. So get the level on. It's like when one of your parents are taking a picture of the family and it's just always angled down, it's always blurry, and it's just of everyone's feet. <laughs> We're not selling feet pictures, I promise. Anyway, next thing, leave photographic styles well alone. We are shooting in RAW, we don't need that. We're, we're editors, we're masters of a craft here. We're artists. And if you want to learn how to edit photo and video, the art of the edit cohort is starting soon. Waitlist details are down below. Okay, next, make sure that the main camera is set to 24 millimeters. That is the primary focal length on this thing. Turn off portrait in photo mode. You can do a little swipe on the camera app if you wanna do that, but we don't wanna mix the two. It's a nine, nine, nine. Turn off prioritize faster shooting. It lowers quality because the read and write speeds here have a little disagreement when we're doing this. Because if you're there shooting fast, like, it has to lower the quality to read them in time. Therefore, we don't want that. Again, nine, nine, nine. We are building a beast here with these settings being changed. A pocket camera wizard, as one would say. 
Unreal. Alas, next, now open the camera app. Now you're gonna notice that some new settings have appeared. In the top right, we've got the raw setting, uh, and if that has a line crossed through it, just tap it and it'll turn it on. Uh, and in the top left, you have a light meter now, which shows your exposure. So if you tap this, you can manually change it and it will stick to that. So if you're shooting outside in really bright conditions and you need to expose for the sky, you can do it here and then it'll stay like that the next time you're opening because we did the preserve setting thing. So much more useful than constantly tapping every time and it doing the auto exposure thing and then it's like a flashbang going off. We do not want. Another trick for you, um, you can actually lock focus by tapping and holding on the screen like this. This is if the phone has a little bit of a wandering eye and is when you're shooting, you just want to say, hey, focus here. Focus in class. Stay looking at this thing that I want to take photos of. Stop doing weird things. You can do that. Press and hold, AF lock will turn on, and de voila. Now, if you come to the crop settings, you can see that the standard is four by three. That's the standard iPhone crop settings when taking a picture, but you can also do 16 by nine, which is basically Instagram stories. Now, what you may not have known is if you take a picture in 16 by nine, when you come to the photo album afterwards, you can go into the edit and the crop settings there, and it will actually have the option to see the full four by three crop if you wanted to crop out again. So it's like you've taken it in four by three, but you framed it in 16 by nine, makes sense? It's very useful for framing pictures for an Instagram story. And lastly, this is a little shooting hack for you. And I just made an Instagram video about this recently, but when you're in the photo app, you'll see at the bottom here, you have the different camera zoom lengths, the native camera zoom lengths, 1X, 2X, etc. Only ever shoot with these preset lenses. Do not digitally zoom in between them. So if you're doing a 0.5, press that. 1X, do that. 2X, that. 5X, that. Don't digitally zoom in between them and be on like 2.4, 2.7, things like that. Because all that is, is a digital zoom and it's just cropping in. So you're losing quality. You might as well take the picture on the native focal length and then just crop in on edit. And you're keeping all the full quality of the image and doing this, you're achieving the same thing. And the voila. And then he said, voila. <laughs> you're ready to go. With all those settings changes, you have set up an pretty much an absolute beast of a camera here just in your pocket. Now with those settings, you will take up more storage. So I'd turn raw on and off sparingly depending on when you are shooting and when you're not, but that's it. You're ready to go. Take some bangers, import them into Lightroom, edit them, and sail off into the sunset as a glorious mobile photographer that you are. Speaking of Lightroom mobile, if you aren't using that as a photo editor, I don't know what you are doing. It is the best photography editing app on mobile and it's free, so you might as well get it. Very easy to use, very easy to learn, and it will give you a great intro into photo editing. Uh, you can later upgrade to desktop if you wanna edit on there, but it's a great start, especially on the go. Like if you're traveling and you're just banging out photos here and there, Lightroom Mobile is a beauty. Uh, and like I said before, if you want some killer presets for Lightroom that sync on desktop and also on mobile, mine are down below. And if you are interested in deeper insight on all things creative and you prefer reading rather than videos, then sign up to my free newsletter, The Creator's Manual. It's also linked below. Hit the like button if you find this useful. Subscribe, of course, and I will see you in the next one. Voila.